Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, and now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Mr. Shenanigans himself, and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 978 of the show. What is going on around here? I want to give a shout out to those who've been, who watched, you know, using my wrestling videos, whether I do recaps or picks and predictions and everything else and recaps and all that. Never get a lot of views, but my recent one that I did a couple, you know, yesterday, um, a couple episodes ago, I should say, uh, the Crown Jewel PTW Event Center got 98 views, which is uh, very, very shocking for me. So I want to say thank you for those who've been watching the videos and whatnot, you know, asking for my picks and everything else. And it's going to be an interesting event tomorrow afternoon here at 1 o'clock. So that's going to be uh, big. So... Right now, let's talk about the final SmackDown and NXT level up before. Um, uh, actually, NXT level up will be the fallout from Halloween Havoc. Um, so, this is the final SmackDown before Crown Jewel tomorrow. And LA Knight kicked off SmackDown and uh, addresses Roman Reigns, and then Roman Reigns. Inter uh, interrupts night and both men decided to trash talk and then they started getting each other's faces about to do some little jaw jacking and Nick Aldis and the referees got, decided to break things up beforehand which I gotta respect Nick Aldis a little bit more and he, he, ever, you know, ever since he became Smackdown general manager he's been more hands on you know he, ma he makes sure that nothing happens and all that and he can really handle himself as a general manager so gotta respect that for Nick Aldis you know I know I'm been waiting for a little bit of a villainous side to come out of him, but we'll see what, because he's been he knows how to be a villain too. So let's see what happens. But right now he's getting his feet wet as the uh, SmackDown GM. But more on that situation. Grayson Wall was joined on commentary for their the first matches. Caleb Braxton interviewed Austin Theory, and uh, it was Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory, and both of them was a great matchup. And then KO ended up winning the match at that point. And then Captain Kelly interviewed Bianca Belair as she gets ready for a main event match against Bailey. But then EO Sky and Bailey did attack Belair. And Nick Aldis, once again, like I said, Nick Aldis is really stepping up. He really knows how to be a general manager. His insecurity separates all four members. Then Logan Paul entered the arena, but he's greeted by the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. And they gave him props about how he handled his business with Rey Mysterio. And he said, expect more of the same tomorrow, he says. And. He said, oh, we're watching that. But then B-Fab um, uh, interrupted him. Gave, she gave a shout-out to uh, a little bit of Street Profits. And looks like talking, Bobby Lashley, is, is there any, any play, anywhere you and I could talk? You want to talk? Yes. Let's do it. It looks like, uh, is B-Fab jumping on board with Lashley and the Street Profits? That will be a very interesting, you know, I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, we want Bianca Belair and all that, so. We shall see. And speaking of Crown Jewel tomorrow, there's a rumor going around. Um, it's uh, I've been on X.com. We don't know. It's confirmed that Kyrie Say may make her return to the company by appearing on Crown Jewel. Be very interesting if that's the case, or will she return on the SmackDown? Rumor has it she may be on the Raw roster. You know, and and rumor has it that she may, uh, if Ray Ripley, re uh, you know, re retains her title. You know, maybe Kyrie Sane could, could end up being on a Raw, or she going to SmackDown to help EO out to retain her title or have a new faction coming in with Asuka. Who knows for sure? But those are just rumors for now. Take it with a grain of salt, okay? So, but the B-Fab wanting to talk to Lashley situation, this is going to be very interesting indeed. Meanwhile, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven in a non-title match as the women's tag team champions took on the team of Shotzi and a partner of her choosing... They claim that Shotzi has no friends, but this she does. A friend in, of all people, Charlotte Flair. 
and looks like uh, but Alba, um, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, the AKA the Unholy Union, was watching the matchup after their stint of uh, taking over for Charlotte and Scott. Uh, um, Charlotte, uh, Scarlett and Shotzi as host of Halloween Havoc, and uh, Charlotte and Shotzi end up winning the matchup. So, who are they targeting? So will that that will that put them in line for a tag team title match? Who knows for sure. Paul Heyman saw Sokoa came out to address the crowd, and then Sokoa was kind of sick and tired of Heyman Paul Heyman rubbing his mouth. So he started talking to Heyman. John Cena comes out, interrupts Sokoa and Heyman, and uh, looks like John Cena dissed Sokoa and Heyman. But he didn't have much of a voice either, so I knew how he felt. And uh, says he's going to kick uh, Sokoa's butt tomorrow night. I mean, tomorrow at um, tomorrow at Crown Jewel. Meanwhile, Damage Control was celebrating her their attack on. Uh, Bianca Belair, and Nick Aldis interrupts him and says, you know what, we'll make this thing fair. EO, uh, Sky, and Dakota Kai are barred from ringside. And e uh, But uh, Dakota Kai and Bailey will complain much, but then EO goes, you can handle it. And she smiled and kind of walked away first. Something's going on, that's for sure. Then they have a good old-fashioned Donnybrook matchup. It was Brawling Brutes versus Pretty Deadly. Heck of a matchup, but despite Elton Prince going through a table and all that, Pretty Deadly finally somehow managed to pick up a win in this Donnybrook match over over the Brawling Brutes, where there's no disqualification, anything goes in this matchup, and it was a heck of a matchup. Paul Heyman didn't talk to Nick Aldis, trying to give him advice. Says, Can you make it quick? I got a way in to do. And then she, and then he, uh, as I said, a few things, and Nick Aldis goes, now I got to go. And then they had the uh, Ray Mysterio Logan Paul weigh in. Logan Paul weighs in at 213 pounds. Meanwhile, uh, Ray Mysterio at 175. The two started talking and then talking smack. And then Ray Mysterio hits Logan Paul. Both men had to be separated. Again, Nick Aldis in the middle of things, taking charge as a general manager. Got to respect that. Then Bianca Belair and Bailey went one on one, and it was a heck of a matchup. Belair though win the match with the KOD, but then she decided to hit Becky with the KO uh, Becky Bailey with the KOD again on the table after the matchup. So that was good. I think she leveled up a little bit of um, Halloween Havoc hangover, shall we say? Um, Ivy Nile went one on one with Valentina for Royce, and Ivy Nile ended up beating for Royce one on one, which was a heck of a matchup. You know, Ivy Nile and the Creeds are now part of the Raw roster, if I, from what I was told. So that brings the tag team division up, up a notch, and, and the Creed brothers they're going to showcase their skills on Raw. Meanwhile, Kelly K interviewed a newcomer, uh, a Native American named Troy Bear, uh, Trey, not Troy, Trey Bearhill, as he goes one on one. With Miles Bourne, who has aligned himself with Drew Gulak, Charlie Dempsey, and and, da and Damon Kemp, and Miles Bourne and Troy uh, and Trey Bearhill, keep saying Troy, Trey ba Bearhill versus Miles Bourne. They went at it. Damon Kemp ended up getting involved during the match and made a distraction. Bourne took um, took advantage of it, including an experienced Bearhill and Matthew Bourne ended up winning. Oh, no, Matthew. I'm getting the names mixed up. What is wrong with me? Miles Bourne versus Troy Bearhill and Miles Bourne winning the matchup. Sorry, folks. My mind, I think I'm getting tired, man. I just want to get these videos out of the way and put them up before I get some sleep. Even though I got work tomorrow because I want to make sure the less videos I do, the better, you know? I don't want to get myself worn out here. So Damon Kemp did get involved during the matchup. Final matchup of the night. For NXT level up, Dante Chan one on one with Oro Mensa, and uh, they probably survived that ordeal in the haunted house this past Tuesday on Halloween Havoc night two. Last Legend and, and Jakar Jackson try to get involved in the matchup, but but in the end, Mensa ended up winning. Now we've seen in the background uh, Pro, um, Boa approach Dante, uh, Dante Chen, and Dante Chen gets up and walks with him. So this might be an interesting situation. 
if they decide to form a tag team, they're going to be a very dangerous bunch. So that's all the time we have on this show, episode 978 of Eric Lemmy's Shenanigans of 1977. Smackdown NXT Level Up is complete. Event Center for the 3rd of November. Thank you for tuning in. Next up, AEW Rampage. Until then, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries telepictures and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.